Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. In India, a bridegroom party consists of the bride, the bride's father, his her relatives, and many more. So the all of the people wanted to go to the bride's house to conduct the wedding. So they had to cross the river. So when they went to the boatman, they told them to go to the other side of the river. When they all got in, they were all tired after the long walk they took to go to the boat. Then they all slept while the boat people were plying the boat. The next morning when they got up, they realized that they were in the same spot as yesterday. They asked the boatman, why is this? The boatman said, I don't know, we were plying the whole night. But one of the boatmen figured out that the anchor was down. So, they couldn't move. Similarly, we all are just circling our material desires instead of moving forward by removing our anger. Some learning points about this particular story. So, we can begin going to temple, but if it's still for our own material distress and our own things, it's still good because we are approaching God, but that will not really give us love for Krishna because we still want something for ourselves. Love is selfless, right? Pure love. What is the example of purest love in this world? The love of a mother to a yes, child. That's what Srila Prabhupada says. Uh, the Acharyas say that love of a mother to the child is a selfless, most selfless love we can see in this world. Because right from the infant stage, mother is just giving, giving, giving. Right? There is nothing the child is giving back to mother. Only probably when it grows up and it earns some money, that's when it probably will do something. But otherwise it's just giving, giving, giving. That is selfless. Selfless is, I don't want anything back from you. I just want to love you. Right? So when we come to that stage of selfless love for Krishna, that's where it's pure. That's where we can really qualify ourselves to go back to Krishna. So that's what Srila Prabhupada is saying. We have to go beyond this, you know, uh, kind of like, you know, something for me, something for you kind of stage. Another practical thing this example is saying is that we all have certain material attachments, right? What are some of the material att attachments kids of your age have? Candy, playing, playing with cars, playing with cars, and buying stuff like the toys buying, you like, mm, Xbox. So these are all attachments we have. So now, um, can you share some? incidents in your own life where let's say your mom asked you to chant or go to a temple or do something Krishna conscious where you felt you were being held by these attachments you were not able to do because of these attachments uh, sometimes uh, when um, I play games I am like too into my games like I'm engrossed with them mm. and I finally finished my game and she said do this stuff I told them like like my mind is blank and I'm like, I don't remember anything I said. <laughs> okay, so this way, you know, here we are not able to serve Krishna because we are not able to serve the order which our parents have given on behalf of Krishna, right? So, so whenever my friends say come out to play and if I haven't chanted yet, my mom makes me chant. But when I chant, I don't give my heart into it and then I just chant and go play with my friends. Yeah. That's a very good example. Yes, very nice. So these are exactly the, the examples which illustrates this incident. Like you know, we are rowing the boat. That means we are trying to go towards Krishna, love Krishna through chanting and going to temple, serving Krishna and helping our parents in different ways. But still, our anchor is fixed. That means our anchor of attachment, material uh, pleasures, we have not still given up yet. That means we still want to invest in them. So then what will happen, we keep growing, growing like this, it may take many lifetimes, still will not go forward. So then what is the solution? To let your anchor. To let your anchor go. What does it mean practically for us? I was thinking that you can limit them yeah. for some time and then after you, like, you are done with them, you can remove it completely so you can go forward. Yes, exactly. So the solution is to let go of the attachments. But Bhavik is talking about very practical way to do it, which I was also going to come to. So how do I do, Mataji, you know, I already have so much habit of playing games, you know, and suddenly you're saying, you know, stop playing games. How can I do it next day? It's not practical, right? So the practical way is to do it is to do it gradually. We know we want to do it. At least can, we should be convinced that I want to have love for Krishna. And we know that these are certain things which are blocking me. So I'm going to pray to Krishna to give me strength to reduce 
you know, slowly decrease the investment. You know, instead of playing two hours every day, maybe I will play one hour fifty-five minutes from per one week. It's just five minutes, but Krishna sees that that is your devotion actually. And then he will help you, he will give you the taste in devotion service that one day you will feel, oh, why am I wasting time playing games? I would rather do some other service. Right? So we should do it gradually. So the point our Acharya Sarshil Prabhupada says is that we have attachments, but we don't invest in them more. We don't feed them. How we feed our attachments is when we have association with people with similar attachments. Let's say, you know, you like to play Xbox. And you have a very close friend who really, really likes to play Xbox. He figures out what are the latest you know, games available, where it's available, where is the best deal, everything he knows. And if you keep associating with that person all the time, then automatically he is going to increase your attachment for games. Right? So when we say we are not going to invest in attachments means we will choose our friends. We will choose the topics we are going to talk with friends. In such a way that it is not going to increase our attachment but rather it will increase our taste for Krishna. Like let us say if you have a friend, devotee friend who is more devotional and they will say, oh let us chant together, let us have Kirtan together, let us you know, read Bhagavatam together. That is a good association. That will help you increase your love for Krishna rather than making your anchor more strong in the material world. But for this to work, you need to have the conviction and commitment to Krishna that I want to love you and I will do whatever is necessary to love you. It's because this cannot be forced. Knowledge can be given, but you know, they say you can take the horse to the well of water, but it cannot, you cannot force feed the water to the horse. Horse has to drink itself, right? So we can all, mothers, parents, teachers, everybody will give the knowledge, intelligence, everything, but ultimately we all have to use our free will. Okay, another incident uh, um, analogy, which clarifies this point even further, it says like, let's say there are two boats, there are two boats which are going in opposite direction. But you are in the middle and you are putting two legs on two boats. One leg on this boat, one leg on this boat. And they both are going in opposite direction. What will happen? You will fall down, right? You will neither... So that's how it is. The two boats going in opposite direction. One is going towards material sense gratification or rather enjoyment through matter which we are used to. Other is going towards pure love for Krishna. But we want to be now do both. Simultaneously we want to make spiritual progress. Simultaneously, we still want to hold on. Then what, are, what is happening is we are putting leg on both boats. Right? What will happen? We will fall down. We will neither be materially so called best sense gratifier. We will neither be best devotee. No says, sense gratification and Krishna consciousness go ill together. You cannot do both. So you, either, you have to make a priority what it is. And slowly let go of the other one. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna.